I plead the blood of Holy Yahushua over this video and over the mind, body, and spirit of every child of Yah watching this video in Yahushua HaMashiach's holy name. Today, uh, the video on screen is a magnet field creating spheres from ferrofluid. Now, um, I've shown this on many videos and uh, I'm now going to explain with a few pictures uh, using Electric Universe theory and Birkeland currents uh, to tell you exactly what's happening on screen and what's doing the rotation. Now I've said that magnets are covered in Birkeland currents which makes it of course a diatom surface and uh, upon this magnet there are halo waves um, they all shoot out from the center straight to the side of the magnet and then produce the halo wave at the edge of the magnet. So what's causing the creation of spheres. Now as you can see there's a line in the middle with spheres. On either side is another line. There used to be spheres going down those two but the ferrofluid amount has almost run out and so it's only rotating the center double helix vortex. Now there's a space in between the spheres and the two outside lines. Some people like to call this counter space. Now I don't know what counter space is to me it sounds like the inverse of space which is ridiculous because as Tesla said space has no properties it's just a thing that you put things in so I don't believe in anything called counter space I believe in physical physics actual action and reaction so I'm gonna bring up uh, two pictures now I'm gonna go through them as to what is actually happening on the magnet so on the left is a double helix Birkeland current and on the right is a double helix Birkeland current. Now the one on the left shows how it would travel through space and the one on the right is the schematic of the fact that matter moves in rotations around a Birkeland current and so it's plainly obvious now that the picture in the middle is obviously being rotated into spheres but how is it being rotated into spheres? I'm going to give a crude example here and I'm going to use a set of springs that we're going to rotate and we're going to see if what I say is actually happening. So to achieve what's actually happening with the ferrofluid we would have to have a clockwise spring Birkeland current on the left and a counterclockwise spring Birkeland current on the right. The clockwise spring would turn counterclockwise and the clockwise spring would turn clockwise. Now there's only kind of three states you can have, uh, rotation down, rotation up, or stationary. And so if you change the clockwise spring there to a counterclockwise spring, it will travel in the opposite direction and so they will become locked and the suns on a string theory would hold and they would be held in place due to a counter rotation of one up and one down. Both of these are rotating so that matter moves in. Now the shape would be slightly different from what you're seeing. I'm going to push them together now because it's a double helix which means it rolls together. So let's have a look at that. So the double helix would be in the center and so those bare patches in between the three lines is where everything is scooped out of that. There's no such thing as counter space where something else is happening. It's just been moved. So anybody who's talking about space and counter space personally um, I think they're talking absolute nonsense because they've never explained actually what counter space is. So this is to show that there isn't counter space on a magnet in between that. This is to show that two Birkeland currents will rotate matter into a sphere and so they've moved matter from one space to another. Nothing to do with counter space, it's to do with rotation of a field creating spheres. Thanks very much. My name is Lee, I follow the Christ. And I'm trying to explain to you all the things that he's shown me because God is an energy being. He is in full control of electricity and electromagnetism. Every description of God is storms and whirlwinds and everything that is caused by electromagnetism. There's a wave rushing across uh, past Bernard's star, past Betelgeuse, and both these stars have suddenly gone very dim. We are in line with this. 
And then you look at scripture and it says that the sun's going to go red. It's going to drop power. So whatever has been racing across our galaxy that has put out Bernard's star and then two light years later in 20 years has started to put out Betelgeuse, um, it's going to be about another 20 years and that wave is going to be here. And God said the sun will look abashed, which means embarrassed, ashamed. Their face will go red. And so the sun is going to go red, just like Betelgeuse, just like Bernard's star. And uh, then Revelation times will begin. So please, follow Jesus Christ. Follow the Christ, the one from the Bible who has expressed himself as the Son of the Father. And they are one because they are energy beings and they are joined. Electromagnetic fields don't change. They cannot lie. They show what is happening. And that is our God. Our God is an energy being and you are dead matter. Dust. I pray and hope that everybody starts to come to an understanding and knowledge of our true God, that he is an energy being. And he's coming to save us. God is not a man and he's not made of matter. He's made of invisible energy, cannot be created nor destroyed. Information is energy, energy is information, so God knows everything. He's in everything, so he sees everything. And he can affect anything at any time by drawing energy from the magnetic fields that surround us to give people power to place people in a pit. I'm going to give you one number that I was given. In heaven, there was silence for half an hour. Well, if you take a thousand years is as a day and a day is as a thousand years and you drop it down into half an hour, uh, an hour, you get 44.8 years. You drop that into half an hour, you get 22.4 years. If you add 22.4 to 2014, when all this started for me, you get uh, 2037. I was just watching the time machine the other day and the moon blows up in the year 2037. So again, we're talking about Hollywood. Are they telling us what's coming? Let's understand that there's a galactic wave coming and it's putting stars out. So that's supposed to arrive in 2052, according to Ben Davidson and suspicious observers. But energy diminishes inversely via the square of, the, of time. And so I believe it's going to happen sooner. So the only date that I've kind of, a number that I was given and thrown together, is that thousand years as a day for half an hour since I started before the end comes. And it works out to around, well, you just add it up from what I've said, 2037. And so do the movies. One last thing. Think of it this way. When a tidal wave comes, what happens to the water on the beach? It gets dragged away. So if an electrical, electromagnetic wave was coming, perhaps it will empty the beach and put out Bernard's star and put out Beetlejuice and then it will put out ours and then the tsunami will arrive. Thanks a lot. Shabbat Shalom priests and welcome back to Wakefulness Theology. My name is Messenger Paula and today we're going to just get right into it. So much to cover. Just to remind you, we are here working on the five trees messages that I got in a dream and we've already covered the first the and the second row of anointing and here we are on the third row the third dimensional anointing. So today we're going to be talking about mindfulness. It's a very quick and easy message, 
um, and that is going to be shared by priest Judy. It's going to be shared by priest Judy. She's going to be explaining the ether and mindfulness in the way that it's, it's mind above matter. It's mind above matter because we are ether. We are filled with the substance of the most high father. Therefore mind over matter mindfulness. We're also going to uh, talk about enthronement, and that is going to be explained by Priest Brandon. So Priest Brandon is going to be explaining the 8th and the ninth and the 10th levels uh, concerning Enoch and his order of the planets. And this is what we know as enthronement, making it to those higher levels of consciousness where the Father is, right? Because we have the seven levels here, and then you got the eighth, and then the ninth, and then the tenth, uh, where the Father is. So he's going to be explain, explaining enthronement, and uh, we're going to be continuing with uh, clarifying and confirming the ether and all these messages we've been receiving up until now. We've gotten lots of confirmation. And the, the importance of doing this is it's not about your intellect. It's not because you're smart. It's not because you understand it all or you know it all. That's not what this is about. What it is is that we're being obedient to the Most High Father. We're being obedient to Ruach HaKadosh. We're getting these messages in the forms of dreams, uh, symbols, signs, supernatural things are happening in our lives. And out of obedience to the Most High Father, we're following the trail to understand what he is trying to tell us and what he would have us do. This is not about works. This is not about being smart, understanding it all or knowing it all. It's just about obedience to him. Okay, so what I've understood so far is that when you follow these breadcrumbs, these uh, you know bits and pieces of, of the message, what it leads you to is a, 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 a understanding that supports and strengthens your faith. It takes you to the point where you don't have, to, it's not like, you know, like they say, oh, you just have to believe, just believe, just believe. Yes, it is. It, that's the, that's the first part. But after you believe and then you follow the father and then you get to know him and then you know, so the things we're talking about here, we know because it's proven. It's proven scientifically. It's proven in the Bible. It's proven in your everyday life as you wake up and live and watch TV and eat your food and take care of your children and go to work. You see it everywhere all the time. Like priest Raphael says, the truth makes sense. That's how you know it's the truth because it just makes sense. Okay, so when you have this kind of, of faith and this kind of, of knowledge or knowing the Father and knowing that it is true and complete separation of yourself uh, mentally and spiritually from the matrix, from Babylon, from Egypt, right? from the beast system, then the things that are going to happen later uh, in this process, we are in revelation already. And we know that the beast is coming. The, the, the Prince of Persia is coming. The mark of the beast is coming. All of these prophesized things are coming and we're seeing, we're seeing the beginnings of it now and it's going to keep going. And we could see it start to manifest as soon as 2022 and 2023. So as I've told you before, please get your passports right now because you want to make sure that you're going to be able to travel between now and 2025-ish. I'm not saying exact dates. I'm just saying the Most High Father is going to need to move us to our place of safety. Some of us are not going to move. Some of us are going to stay where you are. Some of us are going to be going to places in America. Some people are going to be coming to Africa, going to Africa, and you're going to need your passport. And at that point, they're going to be saying that you're going to need vaccines or you're going to need the chip or you're going to need something extra to be able to travel. So in order to avoid those restrictions, please get your passports now and make sure that they're updated and you can at least travel between now and those crucial years of 2025 because it is coming and how are you going to get how are you going to be strong enough to resist the mark of the beast they're talking about that it could be in this vaccine that's coming i don't know if that's true or not there's a, a sister in christ she had a dream and she said that she was told this it could be priest it could be either way we have to be prepared because you we can't take the vaccine either 
You can't take the vaccine. The vaccine is not for us, okay? Our vaccine is the Most High Father. So how are you going to be strong enough to not take the mark and not take the vaccine? You're going to be strong enough because you know it's real. How do you know it's real? Because you've done this work and it's been proven to you over and over and over to a level where it's undeniable. That's how you know. This is not about works of salvation. This is about strengthening your faith and being obedient to the Most High Father so that you're going to be able to work in the harvest. I didn't know it before, but... um now, in hindsight, I've understood that this wakefulness theology ministry is the formation of priests. So we have uh, come together and we have the Ruach HaKadosh has formed us into priests and this is our training. And in two and a half years, we're going to be out physically doing the harvest. So this is also our edification so that we can do whatever it is that he is going to be sending us to sending us out to be doing physically in two and a half years, priests. And I want you to know that this, this, what I'm doing here, this is not forever. I'm going to be doing this until 2025 ish. Now there's a letter line. Um, there's many uh, timelines and letter lines that I have for my own personal life that I've received this message from the father that 2025, we are going to be spiritually mature sons of holy Yahushua. By that time, and again, when I'm saying 2025, we know you got the April to April year, uh, Hebrew year, which is different. Um, we also have the manifestation of the spiritual and the physical. But it, no matter what, it always falls down to 2025, we're going to be who we're supposed to be at that point. And 2025, my work here will be done. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, like... If I'm going to transfer and start doing other work, or am I going to be retired? Um, am I just going to be laying back, relaxing, taking care of kids, working in an orphanage, <sighs> counting pixie sticks? I don't, I don't know what's going to be happening, but 2025, I'm done with this that, that's happening right here, right now. This, is, this will be done for me, okay? I'm writing a book. It should be done 2023-ish time. My book will be done. This this formation process of what we're doing, becoming spiritually mature sons of holy Yahushua will have been accomplished. And I'm going to be moving on to the next part of what I got to do. So I, I pray that you are taking this seriously and you're getting whatever it is that you need. I'm praying that you're getting whatever it is that you need from this now. Okay, priest, as I was saying, this is not an intellectual endeavor just to show that we're smart or to feel like we're smart. It has nothing to do with that, okay? This is about uh, receiving the manna from the Most High Father so that we can mature and He can use us, all right? At the beginning of this video, I showed you a video from Scientific Lee. His channel is great. I highly suggest you um, subscribe to it. He, so far, from what I can see, his dates that he has understood, as far as when I say dates, we're talking about years. We're not talking about date setting. We're talking about through Holy Spirit and through Scripture, being able to understand it and see in our life, well, if this prophecy has happened, if this prophecy is happening, then that means that this prophecy will happen at that time. He's done the same thing, but, you know, mathematically and scientifically, right? Um, but they match up. It matches up. He's saying the same time period that I'm saying, that I've understood from Ruach HaKadosh. Um, his information, I know that it's true and accurate because I saw it confirmed in Spongebob. So at the beginning of, of this video, his video is complex and I'm sure a lot of you are your response probably is, I don't understand anything about science and math. I don't understand. I don't get it. Well, luckily, I asked Holy Ra Holy Father to teach this to me like I'm a seven-year-old child. Thankfully, he is wise, all-knowing. He is gracious and merciful, and he uh, is faithful. And he answered my prayers, and he has given me SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to explain these very difficult, complicated matters in a way that all of us can understand, okay? So I'm going to now show you the exact same thing that Scientific Lee explained at the beginning of this video. I'm going to show it to you in SpongeBob, okay? 
the most important takeaway from what we saw with Scientific Lee, if you didn't understand the other stuff that he said so far, is that, that the Most High Father, he is energy. He is electric. He's electricity. I don't, I don't have the words scientifically explained it well, but we're, we're dealing with electric, an electric uh, father. It is what it is. He's electric. Okay. Electricity can never, energy can never be uh, created or destroyed. It just is. All right. So when you have this kind of understanding, it's how you know that those people who say there is no God, they are liars and the truth are not in them. That they are liars and the truth is not in them. For they do not understand the ways of God, but the ways of man. I don't, I don't, it's so, it's so obvious to me. It's so clear to me. I don't understand how they don't understand. Okay. So hopefully I'm going to show you right now in SpongeBob, uh, what scientifically explained at the beginning. And you will know for yourself that the most high father is real and this is real. And it will give you the support that you need to, to help. Uh, your your faith so that you will be able to say no to the mark and to the vaccine when it comes shortly. This particular episode of SpongeBob is season seven, episode three. So we have the 73, 37. Uh, look it up on the website or however you want to do that, but it's very important, 73 and 30, uh, 37. It's a, a holy letter that started this ministry. If you go down to like my first major video on this channel, I was talking about 37 and 73. So uh, here you go. It's called The Inside Job, and it's about Plankton. He goes into SpongeBob's head. So we're talking about uh, the inside job, the work that you have to do inside of you. Uh, one of the things I understood about this symbolism is that, well, we know that uh, plankton is representing uh, the devil, right? We understand that SpongeBob is uh, representing the priests or, or Christians, however you want to think about it. The Krabby Patty, I just understood today went before I started filming that the Krabby Patty is representing the the ether. It's representing the stuff of the Most High Father. It's representing that spark. It's representing that light that the evil one doesn't understand. And that's why in this, this cartoon, Plankton, i.e. the evil ones, are always trying to steal the Krabby Patty formula. The Krabby Patty formula, meaning the stuff of the Most High Father that they do not understand, okay? Because they do not know the ways of God, but the ways of man. They are trying to steal the formula. Do you understand? what they, they don't understand that breath of life that goes into us. They don't understand that spark of life that creates us. They don't understand the ether, the, 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 the substance of the Most High Father, the fabric of creation. They don't get it. And they're trying to steal the formula. That's all they're trying to do all the time. That's what all of this is about. They're trying to steal the formula so that they can take over and rule the world. <laughs> Mate, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The world, 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 world. So when you think about it in these terms, just like a, for a seven-year-old kid, it makes very much. It makes clear sense, doesn't it? The the Krabby Patty formula is representing the ether. So at the beginning of this cartoon, uh, Plankton. And it's so funny because, you know, he's representing evil, the evil one. Uh, and he has one eye. And we know that the one eye is actually the door. It's the pineal gland. And we also understand that it's the symbol for the controllers because they don't want to let us get through the door. So they are blocking the door. That's why that eye symbolism has the two, the, the, the positive and the negative meaning because it's something that they've usurped and taken as a means, as a symbol of control. They're the gatekeepers keeping us from being able to enter into the door, right? And we've talked about that in past videos. And so he wants to steal the, the, the Krabby Patty formula that he wants to have the formula to the ether under, you know, 
to, to usurp the power of the Most High Father so he can be in control. He had the idea to um, go into the body of crabs, but he messed up and accidentally went into SpongeBob. So here he is inside SpongeBob. So he decides to um, take over his eyes so that he can see what SpongeBob sees. So this is him inside of SpongeBob taking over his eyes. And so when he does that, Sponge SpongeBob is blind. Now, I pray that with spiritual eyes, you can see this. We've talked all that we've talked all the time about your spiritual eyes and your ears, and you know all the Bible verses when Holy Yahushua says, "You see, but you see not; you hear, but you hear not; you don't understand the parables; you're blind and you're deaf." He's talking about spiritually. So here in this instance, the evil one, uh, the devil, I guess, has taken over his eyes and he can't see. He's spiritually blind at this point. So here he is messing with his eyes. And here he's happy because he can he's taken over uh, SpongeBob's eyes, but um, he's he's unhappy because it didn't help him get the formula. SpongeBob wasn't doing anything interesting, so that wasn't helpful. So then he goes to his ears and he takes over his ears. I sorry I couldn't put the subtitles on this one. They didn't have subtitles. He takes over his ears and that didn't help him because he wasn't able to it, he wasn't able to get the information about the Krabby Patty formula through his ears so he decided to go somewhere else so he goes to his brain and he connects to his brain the evil one and this is what I want you to see right here priest do you see this right here this is exactly this is exactly what scientific Lee was showing in the video at the beginning so um, in the scientific Lee video he confirmed many things he confirmed the tsunami the uh, the electrical tsunami that's gonna happen the 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 wave that we talked about a few videos back he confirms it in his uh, video here scientifically and, and again, I just want to clarify, that doesn't mean that there won't be an actual water event between now and the Hebrew New Year. I don't know. I'm just saying if there isn't uh, an actual water event between now and the Hebrew New Year, then the prophecy that we understood was energetic and it has already begun. It has already started as he explains here in this video. He says what happens when the tsunami comes in, it makes all the water leave... Um, the the shore and then the tsunami happens well he's saying with all these stars disappearing and Beetlejuice and all these things that are happening it is a sign of the electrical wave pulling back receding before the, the electrical tsunami happens so that's what he was confirming in his video but right here do you see that it's even the same color priest it's even the same color as this cartoon you see those you see look what's happening on screen and what's doing the rotation. Now I've said that magnets are covered in. Do you see that? That is exactly what you're seeing here on this cartoon. He, this evil little bug, is connecting, This is, he's connecting to the brain of SpongeBob and he is siphoning off e electrically from him. Do you see this? What starts to happen is that he begins to feel whatever he's sucking he's you know like a parasite he's sucking this from his brain and he starts to feel that energy so the superficial greetings is what he's sucking out personal opinions jellyfish technique knock knock jokes nothing really important in his brain so he says he has to go deeper in the brain trying to find you know the substance of the most high father the the formula he finds the secret jar deep inside of his brain and then it says that the Krabby Patty recipe is in his heart. As we go through this video, I'll be showing you when a priest, when priest Judy and priest Brandon are speaking, I'll be putting the pictures back up so you can see as they refer back to what I'm showing you here. It's in your heart. And uh, there was a, 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 a comment I got from the last video uh, this is from uh, Sister Susan. She says, if you rearrange Earth and move the H to the beginning 
I guess the, um, the, the letter H, if you move that here, then you have heart. The heart is sometimes referred to as the mind. So I see another way that it's connected. So if you understand that, uh, thank you for your comment, sister. What she's explaining is that I was saying, when you look at the, um, when you look at this diagram that we've been working with and we have earth as the brain, which we have understood that it works the same way on the micro level as on the macro level. When we're talking about uh, the body of Christ, we're talking about the whole universe, okay? The whole universe. And so earth, the battle for earth right here is the, the mind of the whole universe, right? Um, that's why humans are so important and that's why we're here on earth and that's why the father comes back down and takes over earth, right? New Jerusalem. So she's saying all you have to do is put the H at the end of earth and put it at the beginning and you have heart. And that is the connection of our, our, our minds, our brains being our hearts, right? The Holy of Holies, the kingdom, they're connected. So here you can see it right here. The Krabby Patty uh, recipe is in the heart. So he goes to the heart and he connects. And again, you see this electrical explanation that scientifically, it's the same explanation that scientifically gave us at the beginning about how the Most High Father is electrical. And I'm going to show you more videos from Scientifically where he breaks this down is undeniable. There is no argument. It is. He's explaining here. Look. Currents, which makes it, of course, a diatom surface. Do you see that? That is from magnets. Look at this cartoon. That is exactly what they're showing us. He connects to the heart these diatomic uh, particles from the magnet, the energy comes out, and it transforms uh, plankton into SpongeBob. So it changes. Uh, it changes the the something that was evil into uh, 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 it, it can change a sinner into a saint. It is it is redemption. It is the conversion. It is the transformation. It is it is the it is our salvation. So what I'm showing you here is, you know, yeah, in this cartoon, it's it's showing us in this uh, symbolic uh, parable. It's a parable. But if you understand the bigger way, you understand that we as sinners, as uh, mere man mortals uh, who are in error, we put this um, cap on like he has and we connect ourselves to the most high father's heart, the most high father's mind, like you see in this diagram, which is right here the Christ avatar Melchizedek consciousness. Are you with me? You plug yourself into that consciousness and you get transformed just like you see here. Just like I'm going to show you because priest Judy explains it beautifully. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to put this picture back up when she talks about it so you know what I'm saying here. This is showing you scientifically and in a parable for everyone to understand that when you connect yourself to the Christ consciousness, to the heart of the Most High Father, you are transformed. And don't, don't tell me there's no God because you, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. Nothing you can say supports that, not in science, not in philosophy, not in religion, not in nature. In no way is that supported. That is nonsense. So now Plankton is transformed and he's a little SpongeBob, a little Christian, a little priest. So then his, his wife calls him and um, this is a Plankton coming out of SpongeBob. Okay, because he realizes that it's a lose-lose situation. He can't win here. Um, you know, resist the enemy and he shall flee. So here he's fleeing and he comes out of his nose. And I just thought that that was interesting because um, we were talking about how you need to raise your energy, your consciousness, your frequency, whatever, uh, to the to the kingdom which is up here so that when you die your spirit is going to come out 
the brother said last week from your mouth wherever but it's going to be up here in your head it's not going to come from down in uranus okay and so they're showing you that in spongebob he comes out of his nose so um here next what i'm going to do is play priest priest judy's video that she made for us to explain the ether and a vision or dream that she had as confirmation and I'll put up, you know, images where she's confirming what we just saw in SpongeBob and scientifically. I'll I'll be adding that on the screen. Um, just one one note I want to say for everyone's edification: the reason why we say brother and sister, sister Judy, for example, or or brother Brandon, for example, is because it, it's like in the scripture where they came to Holy Yahushua and they said, your mother and your, your brothers are, are outside. And Holy Yahushua said, my brothers and sisters are those who do the will of the Father. Okay, so when you're saying to another person, brother or sister, in this context, you are recognizing Christ in them. You are acknowledging Christ in them. You are uplifting and, and honoring and praising and giving glory to Christ in them. That's why we do it. We don't do it because we're an exclusive club or something. Maybe we are. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know about all that. We're doing it because we love the Most High Father and those who also do the will of the Most High Father are our brothers and sisters in Christ. So that is honor, not honor for the person, but honor to the Most High Father. Do you understand? So it is very it is a fruit of the spirit. It is very good to to acknowledge someone as your brother and sister in Christ when when that person has um, been saved or or that person has um, accepted Christ in their life. Um, after it depends on who you're talking to, but also you could say priest uh, Brandon or priest uh, Judy. That again, it's not trying to set yourself above or, or anything like that. What it is, is that it's giving honor and glory to the Most High Father because you have dedicated your life to serving Him. So you belong to Him. The work that you're doing is coming from Him. Everything that you're giving is coming from Him through you. So you are acknowledging and giving praise and glory to the Father. We're not using these titles so that we're uh, glorifying ourselves and saying, ooh, I'm so good. No. It's to say that this is coming from him and for him, for his glory and for his honor. So, so please don't concern yourself with the ways of man. Here we are concerning ourselves with the way of the Most High Father and we give him the glory and the honor for all things that we do. So please do not be afraid or self-conscious about saying brother uh, so-and-so, sister so-and-so, priest so-and-so, if, if that's what they are. All right. Acknowledge the father in all that you do and uh, and all things will be well with you. All right. So let's listen to what uh, Sister Judy has to say here. In her video here, I've added a lot of visuals and the visuals are going very fast. And what she's saying is in very in depth. So I just want you to understand that the reason is because I don't expect you to grasp everything in this little, sh you know, short uh, video of hers. What I would like is that if you feel called to understand this more, you can take bits and pieces from what you're going to see on the screen or what you're going to hear her talk about, and you do your own work. You do your own research. All we're doing here is, is putting the, the dots together for you so that you can have better understanding of what the Most High Father is teaching you and giving you. So you have to do that work. Do you see what I mean? So feel free to pause the screen and take your notes and write down what you need to uh, have better understanding of what Ruach HaKadosh is teaching you. Hi, everybody. I hope you all are doing great and having a wonderful week in our Lord. Uh, I'm coming on here today because the Lord has led me to put some information together on ether. And I've been given some visions um, that tie into the ether, so I'll be sharing them as well. Um, I want to start off by giving the definition of ethereal because at the beginning of my walk, I remember I was in prayer one morning and I asked the Lord who I was in him and what I was like. And one of the words he gave me was ethereal. Okay, the definition, ethereal, extremely delicate and light in a way that seems too perfect for this world. 
I think that this is definitely talking about all of us. We are the ether and contain the ether. And I think that we are delicate and light inside. And I think we are too perfect for this world. We just don't know it yet. Um, anyway, um, okay, so here's the first vision I want to share. Um, I saw myself glowing a green-blue color, and I heard the word phosphorus. And I was also made to know that I was full of a pulsing energy, and I could hear it. Like, you know that sound, um, oh, when energy is going through a wire and it kind of goes vroom, 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 vroom. kind of like that I know it sounds it's not a good sound effect but that's kind of how how I heard it um, yeah when the electricity and energy pulses through something um, I was then shown my heart area and I saw a spark coming from it and I heard the word twinkle then I saw this spark grow upwards towards my throat area and by this time it looked like some kind of a silvery white strand or a cord um, and Jesus was also standing directly behind me and I was made to know that um, he's my covering and he has my back which he has your covering and he has your backs too um, and he's with us every step of the way um, so I'm going to give you the definition of phosphorus. Phosphorus comes from um, the Greek word uh, meaning bearer of light, um, which I think is amazing. Um, and this element delivers on um, that promise. The most common forms are white phosphorus made up of phosphorus atoms arranged like a tetrahedron, a four-sided pyramid. It also has the atomic number 15. And I looked it up in Strong's Concordance, and it means to do good. I do which is good that's amazing right I think that's pretty cool and it's interesting that it says their forms are white phosphorus which was what the color of my gown was underneath and then I was uh, emitting the color blue green um, and also too um, when you look at pictures on the internet and you look up ether it will show you um, the ether looking kind of blue green so the second vision I want to share um, is a continuation of this vision that I was shown with me glowing and the, the, the strand coming from my heart. Um, I was with Jesus and he was on my right side and I saw my face and my head and out of my head was a long silvery white strand or cord like thing coming out of it. I could see it at the top of my head. And it looked like the one that was coming from my heart area, but it was longer and it ended up, I was made to know that like just traveled through up through my throat and then just like through the top of my head. Um, this time, um, it was, it was on its way out of my head and I looked up to follow the strand and it, um, led to, um, a long skinny rectangle. Um, it was darker at the bottom. I'm going to put up a picture that I drew. It was dark at the bottom. Um, and as I looked, as I looked up, um, it, it got lighter towards the top. There were two beams of light emanating, um, at the top on either side, but there was an opening for the cord in between the two beams of light. Um, it almost looked like two wings on either side. And I was given the words, this is funny, I was given the word Star Trek. And then I heard Captain, the name Captain Kirk. And I heard Energize Me. I saw the platform where the crew would be transported to another place. And I heard Beam Me Up Scotty. And I saw gold particles floating in the air. And I was given the knowledge that what I was looking at was a portal in front of me. The rectangle was a portal, and that's how we are going to um, get through the portal. We're going to be energized, and we're, our form is going to um, turn ethereal, and we are going to turn into gold particles. Um, that's how we're going to change. Um, and I was made to know that the portal was only like an inch wide and it looked like an inch wide with my eyes uh, it was only an inch wide in diameter and then i heard the scripture 
um, is Matthew 17, 7, 13, and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few there be that find it. So another interesting um, tidbit that was brought to my attention by a sister um, in Christ was that the portal I was shown um, looked like a, a frequency on the Schumann resonance chart, which I think is another confirmation. We know that there's a specific frequency we need to be resonating um, at to hear from the Lord. And the portal, in a sense, is a frequency. Anyway, I thought that was really cool. So I'm going to show you um, the next day I ended up getting a confirmation. This picture um, showed up and it looked exactly like the portal that I saw. It showed up on my Instagram. So I thought that was um, an amazing confirmation. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about um, just ether and just um, some information that I found out about it. Um, ether or spirit, it too can release divine light. According to the Greeks, classical elements included earth, air, fire, and water, with ether or spirit being the fifth element. The fifth element, known as quintessence or ether, it is the intangible element that seems to hold all the others together. Ether could be translated as pure air or sky. In ancient Greek language, this was considered the space where the gods dwelled. Ancient and medieval philosophers also considered the heavens or heavenly bodies to be composed of ether. Even in this day and age, the idea of ether or spirit is hard to understand. It is mysterious, powerful, and elusive. Spirit, ether, can interact and affect all aspects of matter and life, yet it doesn't change in of itself. This is the element that transcends, yet is a part of all the other elements. It is ethereal and all-pervasive. The fifth element has no direction, while the four classical elements are each associated with one of the four directions, north, south, east, and west. Ether has no direction, yet at the same time, and can occupy and encompass all directions. It is everything and nothing at the same time. Ether is vibrational in nature. It is a frequency and energy in action. Even if you can't hear the sounds, the vibrations are still there at various frequencies. They exist and are used for creation and manifestation. The transcendental sound that is associated with creation is the word OM. It is considered the beginning sound, frequency vibration. It is called the universal sound. Ether in the heart is omnipresent and unchanging. In ether, everything is born. As large as the ether is, also large is that ether within the heart. What is called ether, akasa, which means sky, is the revealer of all forms and names. The glory of God shines from the ether. The word of God has the power of the great ether. I have a confirmation with ether being the blue sky. Um, this was a couple summers ago, but I remember like it was like five minutes ago. The Lord brought me, brought it back to my memory. Um, um, I remember being in my sunroom, standing in the doorway and facing outside. I was given a perfect picture, shown a perfect picture. It was so real. I felt like I was there. It was an azure blue sky with a giant cliff that was very light, almost like a sandstone color. I then was given the words, I am the driving force. Things aren't always as they seem. I know without a doubt it's connected to the ether. The spirit as one great ocean, the waves thereof. Using the heart, so I'll keep going on. Using the heart as an organ of perception to connect with the driving force energy of the other organisms not just other humans but earth as well when a person breathes in the meaning of another organism using their heart field a subtle shift occurs within whether subtle or major that changes them the ancient greeks referred to this kind of silent invisible heart-based communication as a thesis, which means to breathe in. Uh, the medical, uh, metaphysical meaning of ether, um, ether, the spiritual substance in which we live, move, and have our being, and out of which can be made whatever we desire. 
Scientists say that Earth's space is heavily charged with energies that would transform the Earth if they could be controlled. This is what Jesus was able to do and what I think we are being um, instructed in and um, taught about, um, which will manifest into miracles of great healing for all God's children. Um, and I think that we are the conduits of the ether and for the ether. Um, the ether, the life ether, the chemical ether, the light ether, and the reflective ether compromise the spiritual ether evidence. It is a spirit element, the symbolism and meaning of the ether that is the celestial energy that fills all sacred space. Aristotle said, Ether is the fifth element, the spirit and soul for the spiritual force that air, fire, earth, and water descend from. Ether is the personification of the upper air, God's breath. We are from his breath. We are ethereal. Ether properties, lightness, airiness, and spirituality, which is consciousness. Words such as ether or ethereal immediately conjure up images of a world beyond the clouds of starlit places filled with heavenly light and divinity as well and a deep sense of peace. What if ether was not just up there, but within ourselves? In reality, we ourselves have an etheric body. Our etheric body is bioplasmic, which means luminous in nature and surrounds the physical body by interpenetrating it. Bioplasmic is an amalgamation of two words, bio meaning life and plasma referring to the four states of matter when matter is in the gaseous state, it has been ionized and possesses negative and positive charged particles. It may be termed as plasma. It is through our etheric body that life, energy, life force, God, Holy Spirit, can be absorbed into and distributed through the physical body. The etheric body thus serves as a conduit for the life energy Holy Spirit, to flow into the physical body we possess and are attached to. The living body radiates warmth and energy. The energy is the life force, God itself. Ether, particles equal vibrating energy. Every atom is just a probability wave, and most of the stuff we call physical matter is really made up of completely empty space, more vibration and mass. Our vibrations are soul essence, our personal energy signature. Our body and minds are surrounded by cosmic energy, and cosmic energy reduces negativity, aids in complete healing, and creates harmony in life. We create our reality, our minds rule over matter, which I totally agree with. The Lord gave me these exact words, mind over matter, a while ago when dealing with a hurdle in my life. Quanta is both a particle wave a particle and a wave. When science dug deep, it found that only energy is, and when spirituality delved deep, it found that only spirit or atman or soul is, and soul is energy. All right, so I, I don't know about you, but for me, that is very clear. Everything that we've been learning and talking about, about the ether and being shown, it's very clear. It's scientific. We're not making it up. It's in the Bible. It's it's And you can see it in your life. You can see it in, in pop culture. You can see it everywhere. It is just a fact, all right? So uh, disagree if you like, but just know you're disagreeing with the Most High Father, not me. This is not coming from me. This is not my information. I didn't know this before either. This was taught to us through Ruach HaKadosh. All right. Um, so the next video is from uh, Priest Brandon, and I'm just so delighted to have more and more priests uh, that are with us at Wakefulness Theology beginning to come out and and sh and feed his sheep and share his and and put the pieces together. This is what all of us need to do. So please let uh, Priest Brandon and and Priest Judy what they're doing. Let it be. Let it inspire you to to begin to do the same thing. We all need to be doing this work. If we all, you know, it's not enough, priest, when you get a dream or you get a piece of the puzzle from the Father, for you to just sit on it, that's not enough. It's not. It's good for you, but it's not helping anybody else. So if, and, it, and it's very nice if you go on Facebook and you say, this was my dream. 
that's nice, but how many people are going to see it? And the people that see it, how are they going to understand it? What's really good to do is when you get the message, you get the dream, you get the whatever, and then you do the research, you put the pieces together to the best of your ability, and then you share it. And then from that, I or someone else can take your piece of the puzzle and put it together with my, our pieces of the puzzle and then we can understand, but you have to do the work. You can't expect someone else to do it for you. If you, if Yah gave it to you, it's for you to sort it out. Okay. So you sort it out, you share it, and then we put it together and everybody's going to understand and everybody's going to be clear because you received the message yourself. Do you see how this works? And then your faith is, is strengthened. And then when they're trying to give you that chip or, or the vaccine or whatever is going to happen, you're going to say, no, 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 there's nothing you can do to, to force me to do this. The answer is no. And you're not going to have any quims or whims or, or, or nothing about it. Okay. Those who are not doing the work, those are the ones that need to be worried. I, I pray that your faith is strong enough because you're going to need it to be able to say no to pretty much living. You're going to have to say no to living on this earth. Shalom, priest of the Most High. I pray all is well in Yahushua HaMashiach's name. Right now, I want to share some information in conjunction with the human solar system with the book of Enoch. Um, this is the second book of Enoch, also known as the book of secrets of Enoch. But here, um, this is the audio, audio version, which I used to find where it's talking about the different planets and the different levels. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this real quick. Go back. I placed the star Saturn on the second Lower down, I placed Jupiter. On the third, Mars. On the fourth, the Sun. On the fifth, Venus. On the sixth, Mercury. And on the seventh, the lowest, the Moon. Okay, so, Brother Enoch, we all know that Brother Enoch was taken up. But as he was taken into the wilderness, he was leveling up. And it was different levels. And he reached a point where the angels escorted him throughout these levels. But when he got to level seven, um, the angels departed from him and he became fearful. So at that point, he prayed to the father that the father was saying, be strong, be brave, not. But at that point, he prayed that the angel would come back and take him to the eighth and the ninth heaven. So... At that point, Gabriel came and escorted um, Enoch to the um, eighth and the ninth, but also into the tenth, where um, God the Father was. And in the tenth heaven, it's called Ar Arabah. Arabah is the tenth heaven. You can find the information as far as the planets in, you know, if you're looking into the written book of Enoch is in chapter 30 verse 4 and that's where I found the planets um, the planetary system so you can go there but anyway I wanted to talk about the 10th heaven because this is this is going to be based on our experience we're, we're getting ready to go in the wilderness and as we go in the wilderness we're going to be leveling up in the spirit realm and so this is the same process that we would have to go through as far as our step and our journey. Yes, but on the 10th heaven, you can find this in chapter 20, verse 2 to 3. And then also chapter 22, verse 1, it will, it will talk about the 10th heaven. And that's, that is where God resides in the 10th heaven. But I'm not saying that he's not limited to that, but you know. But I'm just saying that based on the experience of Brother Enoch, because Enoch was able to come to a point where he was able to join in. And that's the calling on our, our, our lives is to join in with the Father, you know. Because like Michael, Michael, or who is like God, this is the point where we're becoming and we're trying, we're getting ready to enter in into the most holy place. Yeah, I just wanted to share that. But also, 
in Arabah, Arabah I found it in um, Psalm 68, verse 4. And I'm going to show you. So 68, verse 4 talks about, um, if you see the word heavens here, and if you go in Hebrew, it's not the same heavens that we, we normally see in Hebrews, which I think is Shamayim, but here is Arabah. So this is referring to, if you see here, it talks about the wilderness, a desert plain, a desert. Um, if you go a little further down, it talks about the wilderness. So this is just, this is the experience we're getting ready to go through. Like I said, um, you know, to go back, I'm not sure as far as the, the correct alignment of the planetary system. Um, I know we was given the um, back to the diagram here. So, you know, I don't know if, because this video, this audio video is, um, it's in English. So I don't know if it was translated correctly or whatnot. But I just want to share this information. Me up and led me into their midst and said to me, Be brave, Enoch. Do not be frightened. They showed me the Lord from a distance, sitting on his exceedingly high throne. And what is on the tenth heaven, since the Lord is present there? And on the tenth heaven he is God. And it is called in the Hebrew language, Erebus. All the heavenly armies came and stood on the ten steps, corresponding to their ranks. And they did obeisance to the Lord. Then so as you can see, Erebus is um, the tenth heaven. And that's where um, um, Brother Enoch was able to ascend into the tenth heaven. But also... It ties in with the holy letter 38 that Messenger Paulo put out. Pray that we can um, ascend the 8th and the 9th le level. and But not only the 8th and 9th, but also the 10th, um, the, the, the highest level. So we can, that, that's why um, Brother David was saying, Priest David was saying that, you know, we're leveling up. And. I think I'm going to leave it at that right now. I'm just sharing what I've learned um, and trying to bring the pieces together as far as, um, you know, especially with the diagram that we was given, everything that we've been shown in the group. Hopefully someone else can expound on it. But like I said, this is the second book of Enoch, the book of secrets of Enoch. Um, like I said, you can find the planetary system in chapter 30, verse 4. And the, if you want to look into the 10th heaven, it's in chapter 20, verse 2 and 3. And then chapter 22, verse 1. And that's talking about Arabah. All right. I think I think you did a really good job. I think it was very clear. Um we need to evolve, we need to transform so that we can go up to those higher levels, the 8th and the ninth, and maybe some of us are blessed to go to the 10th. That's a lot of information that Priest Brandon shared with us. Please feel free to, to go forth and, and to expound on that. Um, if, you have, if you understand something more, please share it with us. What I understand from it is, as we said last week, it's not really, for me, it's not important about uh, the actual uh, order of the planets or the names of the planets, maybe that is important. But for me, it, it's like a parable again. And we've understood the most important part of that parable, which is the whole universe is the body of Christ. The whole universe is being transformed into uh, the, the body of Christ. And in order to do that, we have to take it over uh, through free will because the Father created uh, this egg known as the known universe creation. Um, but he didn't want it. He's not a tyrant. He's not going to force us to do what he wants. So they came up with the plan so that this is going to be uh, slowly transformed, but through the free will, through our free will that we can freely be his his children freely be walk with him um as with him as his as our god because that's what we chose right so this is the process of transforming all of creation 
And we can see that we can understand this parable through the the um, image. We can, we can understand this parable through the image and uh, through the message Holy Yahushua gave us, saying uh, that the system is within us. So that's for me. That's the most important part. After the details, we can individually. Uh, put those pieces together through more study and more research, but that I think we've received the most important message here um, This next video is very short. It's just confirmation about uh, Holy Yahushua being represented as the hexagon or the Most High Father being represented as the hexagon It's a very important symbol and Understanding Holy Yahushua signs and symbols and numbers will help you to have direction in life as you go through And have to make choices day by day So so here you go confirmation and then one of my favorite terms related to honey is hexagon That's the, the very symbol of honeycomb and hexagon is a gorgeous set of letters that is screaming out Jesus because hexagon equals Jesus. <laughs> yes, sirree. Hexagon equals Jesus. Um, and you can slow down and see more beauty of that. Now, I, I picked off the great I am because a go equals great equals I am, the rest equals great. Um, no less you get the 24 at the center of great from the X and then the 27 from the GT of great in the word hen. So hexagon equals great I am equals Jesus. And I'll bet you can also get the God's son out of hexagon. Let's do it again. Uh, in fact, I see a lot of um, like ES equals X and this S. Um, there's a lot of similarity to slow down E N equals S and there's a lot to, to compare but let's shoot for the God Son um, oh here's one way of getting it yeah the famous eng at the front of the word English equals God and remember English equals Jesus equals God's Son in order So, hence, okay, the ENG, ENG equals God and the rest equals Son, equals Jesus, okay. And then so, the rest is already there, there's your God and the rest now equals Son. And, uh, yeah, there's your O and Son and, and yada, yada, yada. This differs from the S by 6, this differs from the N by 6. And, so hexagon equals Jesus equals God's son. Cool. Um, so next, this is a small confirmation that I received a long time ago, and I never had, I haven't had time to share it with you, so I'm going to share it now. Uh, confirmation about the gamma transforming us. Here you go. Okay, so I'm going through uh, comments, and I get this comment here from numbered NTMH Army seven one seven, and uh, I I commented because they said that it wasn't Acacia Wood, so I commented and said yes, it was Acacia Wood. But then I clicked on this link here. Uh, this person, this brother or sister in Christ, is talking about the aloes in the Bible, and that Chandra is this guy. He discovered the supernova and black hole. This is huge revelation, so I clicked on it, and it led me here. Now, here is a star, and we see the 144 so right here you see the 144, 144,000, right, with the star. Huh. Right before it goes supernova. So if we read down, this is October 19th, 107th birthday. I'm sure all of this is important here. But what got me is right here where it says... Today's doodle illustrates one of the most important of all of his contributions to our understanding of stars and their evolution. This is a, a message I got from Holy Yahushua when I was uh, talking to him, uh, just, you know, in my mind, just spiritually. And I was asking, what more do I need to do? And I was given the response that I need to evolve. Evolution. So when I saw this right here, it really got my attention. Shandrasikars. 
limit. The limit explains that when a star's mass is lighter than 1.4 times of the sun, so this is 14, if you take off the dot, the point, the decimal point, it eventually collapses into a denser star called a white dwarf. When heavier than 1.4, a white dwarf can continue to collapse and condense, evolving into a black hole or a supernova. So the evolution of a star is supernova, where we get the gamma. So again, it's just a great confirmation, uh, brother or sister, thank you for sharing that with us, that we are uh, considered the stars scripturally. We are the stars numbered in the heavens as the children of Abraham. Um, we are uh, in many different symbolisms in the Bible, we're talked about as being stars. So as we evolve, and that's what we're doing right now, and we're talking about the 144,000, we're talking about the five groups of the Bible, bridal army as we evolve we're going to uh, become we're going to go supernova and again we have that gamma amazing confirmation 1.4 wow holy jehoshua uh so priest that's the end um next week we're going to come back i'm almost finished with the ether i just want to show you about the egg and all the confirmations we've had about the egg and uh the the spiritual development of us uh the same as us being developed in your mother's womb physically we have a similar type of uh, development that happens spiritually so I would like to show you that as well here we talked about this last week and about the gold and the silver and the copper I just want to quickly remind you guys I've talked about collodial silver before um, I have I started using collodial silver because I took a vaccine years ago a cold it was just a common cold vaccine I didn't know better it was like maybe in 2002 or 2003 or something after I took that vaccine I was sick every month with every month or every every two or three months I was sick with strip throat after I took that vaccine I had to go to a natural doctor a homeopathic doctor singing a specialist singing doctor and she prescribed for me gold, silver, and copper. And I had to take that uh, for 10 days. Like I take 10 days gold, 10 days copper, 10 days silver, and then rest for 10 days and then do that again. And I did that for like nearly a year. And I haven't been sick since I did that treatment. And so now just as presentive, pre preventative measure when I start to feel as itchy throat or something like that I put 10 drops of oxygen peroxide in each ear 10 drops here for 10 minutes 10 drops here for 10 minutes I take the collodial silver you see it on your screen I'm in France so my box looks like this but when I'm in America it looks like uh, what I showed you on the screen um, and it's an ampoule and you just break the ends and I, I put it under my tongue and, and swallow it. If I'm, if I'm not sick, I just take, you know, maybe once a day with some vitamin C, some echinacea, um, and it goes right away. If I'm sick, I mean, like if I really feel like this is happening, I'll, I'll take it three times, the morning, noon, and night, and it's gone. Like I, I haven't in, in, I don't know, 2003, so in maybe 15 years. I haven't had anything that stayed more than a day. If I start to feel it, I do the, the silver and uh, the hydrogen peroxide in my ear and it goes away with, you know, vitamin C and echinacea. And, and uh, I take also, I go to my doctor and um, I get a high dose of, this is vitamin D. Again, I'm in France, so, but it's a high dose of vitamin D. And in the winter, I, uh, I take one of these and it lasts for the whole winter. I know some of you aren't able to go to the doctor. I'm able to do it in France because it's cheap here. We have socialized medicine, but um, it, it looks like the same thing. And I, I take that and it's good for three months. And with that and the, or the silver and just, you know, I haven't been sick in years. So I plan to do that again. I, I plan to just stick with the same thing I've been doing all this time. So if you would like to get silver, I, I would suggest getting it soon because I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen, but it, it's helped me. I, I've 
it's worked for me and uh, we were talking about it and we were saying there perhaps there's that reason that we have the gold and the silver and the bronze and the scriptures because we're talking about purity and cleanness and cleaning viruses when you have a werewolf a werewolf you kill him with a silver bullet why do you kill him with a silver bullet because he is a virus and silver kills all the viruses in the old days in the hospitals and in houses they used to have all of the knobs on the doors and the windows they used to be made of copper why copper because it is an antibacterial and that's something that you're always touching the doorknobs and so forth so it, it would take away the bacterial and the viruses from the house so they wouldn't wouldn't propagate right I don't they stopped doing it I guess because they're cheap I don't know but that's something they used to do that's why they have the silverware the silverware the forks and the knives that are actually made of silver because it's antibacterial right so we're talking about purity purity of the body of Christ purity of the temple that's why it's represented in the gold and the silver and the bronze okay and that's why it says in the scripture his feet is like bronze we're talking about the metals purity you, it is antiviral and antibacterial the metals okay and they will heal you if you know how to use them so um, again that ties into what we talked about last week about the DNA actually being able to uh, form um, metals all right well priest I'm just gonna end there I, I pray that you're blessed we'll, we'll come back next week with more clarity and information and confirmations uh, peace love and blessings to you all all glory to the Most High Father holy is Yahushua Shalom priest